How you going, you silly mutt? G'day, I'm Steve Lanchester, and welcome to another episode of Full Bore. On this little episode, we're going to be pulling the engine back out of Crumpy, because unfortunately, it's making some horrible noises, which is a massive shame, because the 18RG is just a magnificent piece of history. Um, one of Toyota's early twin cams. Now, it's making what appears to be a bit of a rod knock noise. However, it's also low on compression, so... Um, I have no idea what it's going to be, but I've got an odd suspicion that because it's been running so poorly, it has ha um, actually diluted the engine oil with petrol, and um, it may have, uh, yeah, done some internal damage. So, really all I'm hoping for is that the cylinder head, at very least, is okay, and the piston hasn't... Um, hit it or it hasn't dropped a valve or something silly. Um, I haven't run it to diagnose it because it sounds so bad that I don't want to cause any extra damage. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull it out. We're going to take it back home and um, pull it apart and see what's wrong with it. Fingers crossed. First off, just going to drain the coolant out of it. Now, one of the funny things that's happened with Crumpy in the meantime, whilst we've had it going out here, is the, the battery and the rubbishy battery clamp that I've got going actually allowed the battery to hit the fan, which is off an FZJ80, um, because the last fan got hit by a stick and got destroyed, and so is this one. Now, actually, that's impact damage from a battery. Spray the entire engine bay with um, hydrochloric acid. See, parts of the cylinder head are starting to corrode. All the zinc plated lines have lost all the zinc and my um, bonnet which I made has lost the, um, the zinc spray on my gusseting which is kind of funny. It smells funny too. I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm going to pull off all the ancillaries. Yep. Now I can show off your awesome hoist, Dave. Mm -hmm. so this is Dave's 12 volt electric transportable hoist that runs completely off the grid. You want to give us a little demo, Dave? Look at that. What a triumph of engineering. Probably use the other side one, eh? Uh, well, probably both. Mm -hmm. True. Takes a little while. Yeah, I'm guessing go up. Mm. Well, pull pull yeah. that chain. Yeah. Up. Yep. I'm on As far as he's going to go. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> hmm. Just lift it over that little bit. Here. If you hop in there, hop in, stand on your dip, and then just a 
Oui. Heck yes. Mechanics or something. <laughs> what a what a machine. <laughs> so this is Dave's brilliance. It's an old Molnar hoist from his old workshop from before he was retired. Hey Dave. Mm. So because we're off grid out here, we don't have access to um, huge amounts of electricity or three phase, which this previously was. But um, Dave got given this hoist back after they retired it from his old shop and he bought it for a carton of beer, apparently. Now, um, Dave in his infinite wisdom, for whatever reason, decided that a VDJ 79 series starter motor would be the perfect thing to power a hoist off grid. So it's powered by two AGM batteries and that's hooked up. That's still 12 volt, isn't it, Dave? Yep. Yep. Now the thing is with um, 79 series starter motors is that they actually spin in the wrong direction for the hoist um, due to the way that the um, brushes are phased on the commutator, isn't it, Dave? Yep. So he had to uh, change the position of the brushes on the brush plate to make it um, directional so you could swap it, mm, spin, it the other spin way. it the other way because regardless of which way the polarity was set it'd still spin the one way won't it that's correct yeah. yeah right so what a weapon of a machine thing is we're, we're yet to um to actually brace it into the ground so it's not what i'd say adr approved but what makes it truly off the grid is this solar charger. So that charges the uh, AGM batteries down there and of course, boom, big old solar panel on the roof. So it's a solar powered hoist. Dave, you're saving the environment one step at a time, aren't you? Someone's got to do it. Yeah, look, the, the politicians aren't. <laughs> so look, solar powered hoist, patent pending. Um, Bit of a weapon too, eh? It's, I wouldn't say it's slow. It's probably slow once you put like... He's pretty proud of it, I gotta say. It's as fast as it used to be. Yeah, well. Look, and for people who complain about VDJ 79 starter motors, look, where else are you gonna put it except for in the valley? And if you're gonna do it, you might as well over-engineer the starter motor. So, Toyota, there you go. Very nice job. But anyway, 18 RG's out. We're gonna put it on the um, trailer and send it home. Well, boys and girls, the 18 RG twin cam Yamaha motor is up on a stand in the engineering facility of science. Now this is going to be fairly interesting because I have no idea what's gone wrong with this motor and all I can say is that it started making a horrible knocking noise similar to that of a big end bearing failure. Now what has sort of got me a bit miffed is that this sort of coincided with me putting a new set of spark plugs in it. Now um, I've got a few theories. Theory number one is that it is in fact a big end bearing caused by the fact that the engine has been running so poorly. Um, and what that I reckon has happened is that because it's been running poorly the carby has been feeding fuel into the engine which isn't being burnt it's just going past the piston rings and filling the sump with petrol which would explain why of course the petrol well the engine oil was so diluted with petrol now for those of you who were in the know you might think well ah that's actually the mechanical fuel pump diaphragm has actually failed and is starting to fill the sump. Well, I counteract that by saying that I don't actually have the fuel pump hooked up whatsoever because I know it leaks. And also I've just been run running one of those dak 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 fuel pumps uh, run off the coils. So, hmm, it's definitely not that. The engine oil was diluted. What could have been the case is that that big end has failed. When I've put a new set of plugs in it, it has ran good. 
and made that knocking noise more pronounced because it's actually firing on that cylinder. Um, theory number two is that when I've put the plugs in it, um, one of the spark plug holes was actually full of oil. And I know this because it hydraulic afterwards, but it didn't hydraulic on a firing stroke. It just sort of went boom like that. Now, whether or not the flywheel could have enough inertia in about a quarter of a rotation or half a rotation, whatever it was before it did hydraulic to bend a conrod, I'm not sure and I'm pretty skeptical about that. So, either way, it's a bit of a shame because the 18RG is a pretty incredible engine for its time. It's a piece of history and a lot of people have been saying, well, why have you got this engine in a dirty old Hilux where you will eventually destroy it? Well, I wasn't expecting this to happen. And I was trying to take as good a care of it as physically possible, considering it is, in fact, a bush basher. But here we are. The thing is about stuff like this is that in most cases with old engines, it's pretty much going to be 100% rebuildable. Just depends on whether it needs a bore or needs the, um, the uh, crank remachined or what have you. It's going to get back and up and running again, so don't you worry. So what we're going to do next is uh, start pulling this bad boy apart. Let's get cracking. I'll start off by saying that I've already pulled the spark plugs out of it. And I've taken a bit of a peek down all of the uh, cylinders and there's no chunks of metal or anything. So I'm fairly certain that at least the most important part of the engine, which is the cylinder head, hasn't been damaged by like a dropped valve or something like that or a bit of foreign object down in there, which would suck because, you know, the cylinder head and the carbies are the most important part of this entire engine because from what I can gather, everything below is practically just a standard 18R. Don't know what the likelihood is of getting a gasket set for this thing. Probably not every day people get to pull apart an 18RG, but it's got some interesting design features. Say for instance, on the cam sprocket here, you've got multiple dowel holes both in the sprocket and in the cam, so it's very important to of course make sure you know exactly which one the dowel went into. This weird little washer here actually rotates around to hold the dowel in the correct location. So if you put it in the wrong spot, say for instance where this flat is, that dowel can come out and then just fall down into the bottom of the um, chain cover and um, mount things up. So very interesting. A lot of design features that really aren't used very much today. Well, that's a disappointment. Well, I've got to say that is a pretty stupid thing for me to have done. And my disappointment is immeasurable. I don't know how I'm going to emotionally recover from this one because, as it turns out with Crumpy's motor, when I replace the spark plugs in it, 
I accidentally must have let a screw drop into cylinder number four and has munched it up something fierce. Come over here, I'll let you have a squeeze at it. This is piston number four, and as you can see here, that is absolutely cooked. The head of the um, screw has actually been impacted into the top of the piston and cracked out all the ringlands. So that's why that had no compression in cylinder number four. You can see the uh, thread of the screw has impacted there and a little bit there. So it's done a number of it on that bad boy. So um, that's a bit rough. The um, cylinder, sorry, the engine block is sitting there on the ground. The bore is immaculate. I could reuse that any day of the week. Same with the crank, same with the cylinder head. Um, the rest of the pistons, like, look, this engine was in really good nick when I pulled it apart. I probably didn't show you in the video, but the big end bearings and mains, all that sort of stuff, were in serviceable condition. But, unfortunately, I've kind of given up on that engine because, um, as it turns out, I buffed the top of the piston and it didn't actually have any sort of markings on it. Generally, if these are standard pistons, they'll have an STD stamped on the top. If they're an oversize, they'll have the oversize, so it'd be like 0.10 or something like that on the top to give you an indication as to whether the engine has been bored out and hence needed um, oversized pistons. That piston didn't have any markings on it whatsoever, so I kind of just assumed that it was a standard piston. A bloke in a town very close to me actually was selling a set of pistons for one of these bad boys, and I went over to have a bit of a look. And when we measured them up, it turned out that his pistons were far smaller in diameter than mine. And uh, they had STD stamped on top. So that means that my pistons are actually oversized pistons. Um, and standard ones by themselves are super hard to come by. And you have to import them from Japan. So I've practically given up on this engine because a set of pistons is going to set me back... 1200 1500 bucks and I don't think I can get them in the oversize That I need plus they're like the high comp ones with the valve relief So the 18R which is the standard variant of this engine the pistons aren't the same because I don't have the valve reliefs so Look I uh, at this point I'm gonna have to give up on this or I'm, I'm gonna stash it in the side of the shed and see how we go the thing is, all is not lost, because even though I can't use his pistons that he was going to sell me, he just so happened to have another cylinder block sitting there that matched those pistons. So, I've got a standard bore block and a set of standard bore pistons. So, on the next episode of Full Bore, or a future episode, you'll see me put that engine right... Oh, wait, that's the wrong engine. You'll see me put that engine back together again after being apart for an unspecified amount of time. But that might be a fair way in the future because uh, I've got to track down some more parts. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next episode of Full Ball.